in a CCD class years ago, the children were asked to depict one of the scenes from the Bible. And one of the kids proudly held up their drawing, and it was an airplane. The teacher asked, what's that? The child said, it's the flight into Egypt. (laughs) And who's the one in the front? Oh, that's Pontius the pilot. (laughs) Brothers and sisters, today we hear this story of the gospel of the family of Nazareth. That is, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. Joseph, Mary, and Jesus. Living together in these different circumstances and having, of course, to always seek God's heart in everything. If we could sum up the readings, that's exactly what one might say is the core of everything that we've heard this morning, to seek God's heart in everything. We can hear that broken down in different ways, and sometimes you know, we might forget that though we hear certain things in Colossians, we forget that maybe Ephesians puts a lot more emphasis on how husbands are supposed to basically die to themselves and be like Christ to their wives, and then the wives are supposed to be under the mission, submission, under the mission, a mission of holiness. Years ago when I was in Honduras, I had a guy come up to me and say, Father, tell my wife to be submissive to me. And I said to him in Spanish, you know, The word submission means to be under the mission of. So if your mission is holiness, she would be right to be obedient to you. But if your mission is selfishness, she's right to disobey you. He didn't ask me anything ever again. (laughs) When the fall happened, Adam and Eve, here I've got four fingers held up. There were four relationships that were broken. Obviously the one between God and man. That is our relationship between God. Uh, among us humans and God, and Jesus came to restore that. There was also the relationship of the soul and the body and the spirit. That is, we don't quite do what we want to do, right? Our, our heart might be desiring goodness, but then we fall into wickedness. There's a disconnect. So Jesus came to bring that restoration, that peace to the human person as a whole. To be wholly healed in a holy way. Likewise, there were effects that affected creation. That things weren't necessarily the right way. And Jesus came to restore that as well. Which is why we hear that all of creation awaits the revelation of the sons and daughters of God. That as we are healed, so is our relationship with creation. St. Francis is a perfect example of that. Because the holier he got the more he was able to interact with creation in such a way that he could even tame a wild wolf. But the other, the fourth relationship that Jesus came to heal is that between man and woman, between people in general. And this is why we celebrate this feast day of the Holy Family, looking to Jesus, Mary, and Joseph as examples of how to live in holiness together, mutual love, mutual submission out of reverence for Christ, that is, putting oneself under the mission of the other, preferring the other, giving God the preference in everything, again, seeking God's heart in every single thing. Children being reminded that to honor their parents is to remember that life flows, blessing flows, from generation to generation, that those who give life are meant to be fonts of life. And even if our parents aren't perfect, we remember and honor them for the goodness of who they are. Likewise, husbands and wives, giving themselves to each other before an altar of sacrifice, saying, I am forsaking all for the sake of you. I am sacrificing what I could be doing on my own in order to be here with you. They say that the way that the family goes, the way society goes. And so therefore, brothers and sisters, today we ask the Lord to send his peace, his shalom, that is that wholeness, that healing, that restoration upon families today. 
we also pray in a special way that those of us who, and it doesn't mean we have to be perfect, but we just simply have to be people who get up again and try again and continue to forgive and continue to ask for forgiveness and to, and to continue to recognize there is a good to be achieved that God may inspire more and more holy couples to be examples in today's day and age in a, in a time and a season where such examples are sorely missed. That where marriage is no longer seen as a covenant that is an exchange of persons where you basically say we are now bone of bone, flesh of flesh, we are one, it becomes contractual. And this is an unfortunate side effect of what's been going on. And yet, we don't sit in condemnation of what's happening in society. But instead, our hearts are stirred and moved as we hear what is held up for us, the example held up for us, to seek God's heart in everything the way Jesus, Mary, and Joseph did. So in that heart's desire, in that heart cry, we also include the compassion that Jesus has on the world because he came specifically to save us in all of those areas that we already discussed. So today on this last day of the year, the Feast of the Holy Family, we ask the Lord to bless families in particular. And as a good and holy reminder, you have several opportunities today to gain indulgences, perhaps for your deceased family members, either by spending some time in prayer before this crash here, because of the 800th anniversary of St. Francis celebrating Greccio and having the first nativity scene put together, or by praying the Te Deum and thanksgiving today for all of the blessings that God has given throughout this 2023 with expectation that God, who has been faithful in the ups and the downs of this past year, will be faithful to us also in this year to come. Amen.